Right, we get into the next topic, and the next topic is assets. This word um, you may have heard before, assets, um, it's pretty common used in English. Um, here's a little thing, you can look it up if you want, a definition on Google. Uh, what is an asset? What is an asset? How would you define it? Um, what would be some characteristics of an asset? And then you can think about, you know, what are your assets? What are the, some things that you have that are assets? So, have a pause, have a look, have a read, if you, if you would like to. Now, we're going to have a bit of class discussion, and often, you know, you think about assets, and most people think, you know, a car is an asset, okay, yep. A car, um, a computer, or a laptop, things like that, definitely. Uh, assets, uh, the phone that you have, yep, that's an asset. Um, but it goes more than that because you start to think about, well, there's a lot of things that you have that, you know, could be an asset. So let's have a look and see what the definition of an asset is. There's three parts that are needed. It is something that you own, so it's something under your control, something that you have. Something maybe under your own name, for example, a vehicle, that would be under your own name. The second part is it's got to have something of value. Okay, so something of value, um, you can put a dollar figure on it. Um, you know, if you were to sell it or transfer it to someone, they would give you some cash. So it's got to have some sort of value. And finally, it's going to give you a benefit in the future. And this could be in money terms or another benefit. So let's start to think about a few of these. A car, for example. So it's a car, you own it. It's in your name, you control it, you have the keys. Something of value, if you were to sell your car, you would get a certain dollars, and the other person would walk away with the car. And it gives you a benefit in the future. In this case, a car would generate money, uh, but it gives you the benefit from going from point A to point B. So that's the benefit. Makes life a lot easier. Likewise, with the computer, um, as a, you own it, you have it, it has value, you can sell it, and it gives you the benefit because you can then access the internet, um, do your studies, that's the sort of benefit you get. Um, so there are some um, assets that you can have that would be, they would um, give you money benefit. For example, um, if you had maybe a hotel building, so you own the hotel, you had a hotel building, well, um, let's go through it. It's something you own, it definitely has a value, and it gives you a benefit by people coming and staying, and giving you money in return for, for those stays. So there you go, that would be an example of giving you a benefit in money terms. So, for all these things, you've got to have those three things when you think about um, an asset. There are some things that um, are quite assets. Um, some people say, you know, knowledge or you know, skills, things like that. Well, that's an asset to me. And in the English term, yeah, it's, it's a, it is an asset. But as accountants, we can't really record it, can we? Now, it's something you have. Yeah, something you own, that's the first point. Um, it gives you a benefit in the future, yes, because if you have the, this knowledge, it helps you. But what's the value? Can you sell it to somebody and they take it away? And that's where it falls down. So you can't really put a value on exactly how much is your knowledge worth. Um, so we don't record some assets where it's a bit hard and it's a bit vague. It's got to be concrete, we've got to actually know the value. We've got to know exactly the things we own. So, once we know that something is an asset, we can break it down into two parts. Now, one of them is there are some assets called current assets, and there are some that are non-current assets. 
Now, current assets, uh, these are items that we can turn into cash, you know, uh, get into the bank account, or they are already cash, or they're going to be used up within 12 months. Okay, so current assets, items that will be um, cash, or turned into cash, or used up within 12 months. Now, there's going to be three main parts with this. Obviously, money in the bank account. Money in the bank account, that is a current asset. That's one of them. Second big one is called inventory. Inventory or maybe stock purchases, things like that. Um, if you're working in a restaurant or retail, these are the items that you have that you are going to sell to your customers. So, you're going to want to sell it and turn it into cash within the next year. So, that's a current asset. Final one is a thing called debtors. Uh, there's another word for this. If you've studied accounting before, you would have seen it. Okay, debtors or accounts receivable. There we go. Debtors or accounts receivable, uh, these are people who owe the business some money. So um, maybe you've made a sale um, and they've said, oh yes, I'll pay you next week. And so they owe the business money. And so they're going to give you cash within 12 months. Well, you hope. So these guys, the business has made a sale and these are customers who owe the business money. Right. Now, um, the final category is non-current assets. So these are items that are held for the long term and won't be sold in the next 12 months. So when you look at some things, some things are short term. You know, these are our current assets. But some things we want to keep for a long time. And these are things, if we're going to hold it for longer than 12 months, it's a non-current asset. Things like a hotel building, that's going to be around for a long time. I want to keep hold of that. A car, yep, we're going to use that for a long time. Computer, phone, equipment, furniture, fittings, long-term investments. All of these things are called non-current assets. So there's a bit of a quiz in Canvas that you can try. Pick, pick which one is current, which one is non-current. Okay, got a few examples here, but there is actually a quiz there. So bank, we've already done, that's current. Debtors, that's again a current one. Building, we're holding for the long term, so that's going to be a non-current. Inventory or stock, well that's a current one. Vehicles, that is a non-current asset. And kitchen equipment, again non-current. When you think about the classification, you just need to think, is this a short-term thing? Are we going to use it up, turn it into cash? Or are we going to use it for a long time? Is it going to stay around? Is it part of the business? And so if it is, then it's going to be a non-current asset. Okay, so we've just talked about assets. We've just talked about uh, things that we um, own, that have value and give us some sort of benefit. So that's an asset, and we've just talked about current assets and non-current assets.